So speaking of 30-year-old technologies, uh, let's Emacs. <laughs> um, I feel kind of uh, feel kind of weird giving a talk about uh, 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 racket mode because I think Doctor Racket is actually one of the kind of killer apps for for racket. I mean, one a few years ago when I was saying to myself, I want to learn a Lisp, and I'm thinking, okay, Common Lisp or Scheme. Okay, I'll do Scheme, and then what Scheme should I pick? Uh, I mean, Dr. Racket is what made it kind of a no-brainer decision because you just download it, you install it, and five minutes later you're you're doing Scheme or now Racket. So um, uh, I think the thing is, though, if if you start working on some projects that involve other types of files, like I don't know, web project, and you're you're trying to edit JavaScript or some other types of files uh, in in Dr. Racket, it, that's not really what it's designed to do. And so as I did some more multi-file types of projects, I started to use Emacs. Now, if you go look for a racket mode a, a year or two ago uh, to use, you, you wouldn't find one, and you'd find various scheme modes, and they had like uh, decades of scheme history, and it, you know, I would load one and say, okay, I want to run my program now, and I couldn't figure out how to run my program, and it, it was kind of confusing. So I'll just jump in here. This is, uh, this is racket mode, and... Um, so first of all, it, it colors things, which is uh, really remarkable. It also does indentation of racket forms. Uh, and most, mostly this is the standard Lisp mode kind of indentation. Racket has a few idiosyncratic forms, like a uh, fourfold, has a, a, a accumulator list, and a, a, a list of uh, four clause expressions. Uh, racket mode will actually indent them under each other. Uh, you know, a lot, not a lot of exceptions like that, but where there are, uh, and if I have overlooked them, let me know and I will try to indent them properly. Okay, so the other thing I mentioned is uh, how do I run my program? Well, you can hit F5 and it will uh, open a REPL window and it will run your program. And this particular program had some expression down here that eventually evaluated to 6. Uh, uh, now, once the REPL is open, oh, good typing in front of people. Uh, once the program is open, you can type uh, expressions in here. Uh, one thing you can do is uh, explore interactively in the REPL. For example, I can make a new definition of the symbol foo, and uh, foo has a, a value. But if I go back to my uh, file buffer, source file buffer, and hit F5, well, now, of course, I can still uh, run add. However, if I try to get the definition of foo, it's not defined anymore. So like Dr. Racket, if you want a combination of the benefit of an interactive REPL, but also the sanity of being able to go back to a baseline, which is whatever is in your source file, uh, Racket mode is, is uh, for you. And if you don't like that, then uh, it is not for you. <laughs> um, also, uh, tests. Uh, I love to put tests next to the code that is being test, tested. Uh, so for example, there's this kind of silly add function which sums a, a list of arguments. And below here are some unit tests. We require a rack unit. We do a check equal. We know this thing will be true. Here's, here's another thing that uh, we know will be false. Um, you can hit control F5 and run your tests. Uh, oh, it looks like one of them failed. I'll use the standard Emacs keystroke to go to the location of an error, and it takes me to that location. So, um, you know, one disadvantage to having your tests in the same file as the code that they test is potentially if the tests were at the top level, not in a submodule, they would always run when your file runs. Racket solves that problem by letting you put tests into a test submodule. The other problem is clutter, and so you can quickly fold all the tests in, in a file and unfold them later. Okay, so moving on. Sometimes it's nice to find out where things are defined. So we have this usage here, this application of add. I hit meta period, and we go to the definition of add. And uh, meta is the secret code word for the alt key, for those of you who do not use Emacs. Uh, if I'm in add and I uh, hit meta period on fourfold, we go deep into the bowels of the Racket implementation. Uh, oh, let's see what quasi syntax loc is like. Oh, it's defined here. How about this funny Greek symbol, lambda? And we go to the, whoops, we hit the wrong key. We will do that later. 
we hit meta period, and we go to the definition of uh, new lambda. So uh, this can follow things even through renaming provides, because behind the scenes this is using identifier binding. And finally, before I do the question, if I go down here to the EQ symbol and hit meta period, uh, down in the status bar it says EQ defined in kernel. I can't do anything about that. <laughs> Pardon me? It doesn't open the C source code? Right. So it does not open the C source code. If, if uh, Matthew Flat tells me he would use this mode and that would be useful for him, I would definitely add that feature, <laughs> given how much he has added and done for me. Uh, but maybe he will rewrite that stuff in Racket before I can add the yeah. feature to Emacs. <laughs> I can move. Uh, quick question? Yeah, can you go backwards? Oh, yes. And so uh, right to the left, uh, immediately to the left of the period key is comma. And if we hit alt comma, we can back up through the stack of uh, things that we visited. OK, so that's visiting stuff. Oh, right, if you are on a, a require form, and you hit control alt period, you uh, can go into that file. Um, this seems like a rather pointless uh, file to be requiring. When we hit alt comma or meta comma and go back, and let's get into a couple require related uh, tools in racket mode. So the first one is called uh, racket tidy requires, and this will take all these individual require forms that are in the file and gather them together into one require form. Uh, things are grouped together for the OCD among us, like myself. Uh, so here are the four syntax uh, requires. Here are the, the phase zero requires. They're grouped first by module path uh, requires sorted alphabetically. Uh, relative requires sorted alphabetically. So um, let's undo that. That should be one undo step, not two. I will fix that. The next uh, command is uh, racket uh, trim requires. So that will go in and figure out that most of those requires we had are not actually needed. And uh, uh, that actually uses the macro debugger tidy requires module behind the scenes. Yes, Robbie has his hand up, which scares me. Yes? <laughs> yeah, I, right. I'm, I'm uh, uh, using identifier binding to find the module that, where the definition is and then Expanding the syntax and walking it, looking for things that expand to defines. And then you've got the cache somehow, and that's why you went right to it instead of reading. Uh, no, I think I just went right to it. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. So, what was I talking about? Oh, right, requires. Right. So, we eliminated the requires that we weren't using. Uh, the only one that we truly need in this module is the require for syntax of syntax parse because down below here we were, we're actually using syntax parse. Okay, let's undo that. And uh, the final, whoops, the final one is racket base requires. It's good practice in racket to usually make your lang be racket base because it pulls in less stuff, smaller footprint in time and space. So racket requires will do all of the above plus change the lang line to racket base and add whatever requires might be needed. So for example, in uh, Lang Racket Base, it doesn't actually require Racket Base for syntax, and that always trips me up, so it puts that in. And also down here, we used identity instead of values, just so I could trigger, trigger this, and it uh, pulls in Racket function up above here and requires that. Okay, so that is uh, fun with requires. I want to uh, keep things moving along on time. There's, there are commands here to do local macro expansion. Um, you know, nothing, nothing too fancy. Uh, what's, a good, what's a good macro here? How about define? That would be good. So uh, we can expand, and it will do an expansion down here in the REPL. There is also a uh, kind of undocumented shady feature <laughs> called Rakagui Macro Stepper. Uh, the first time this will not work. But, <laughs> but uh, where am I here? Oh, right, back to the racket window. Yes, of course. Uh, but the second time, it, it, it should work. Ah, there we go. So it pops up the, the GUI macro stepper that we all know and love. Um, this little message here, on-demand, one-time instantiation of racket GUI base, is one of the harder things uh, to, to figure out. Because if you're not using Racket GUI, you don't want to have this window open up if you're just doing some texty Racket. So I wanted to postpone that. 
and only load that when it was necessary. And Robbie gave me some help without which I would not have been able to figure that out. Uh, okay, let's keep moving along here. Uh, we did that, we did that. Okay, documentation. So you're cruising along, you are cruising along in the buffer that you want to have, and let's say uh, you need documentation for full, for fold. So control C, control D will open up a racket browser window with uh, Matthew Butterick's awesome new and improved look and feel for the racket documentation, the cool fonts. Uh, having said that, uh, I have had some feature requests from people to have the documentation appear actually in Emacs in the buffer. So this isn't merged master yet, but the last week or two, I've been playing around with um, this feature, which goes in, finds the HTML for the fourfold function. Here's the little, what kind of thing is it? Uh, explanation, syntax, and procedure. Here's where it's provided from, which is a tooltip. Here is an HTML rendering, uh, maybe not the most beautiful HTML rendering. And then down at the bottom, there are a couple of uh, hot links you can tab to. Uh, one of them is the visit definition feature that we already saw, and the other one is the view of the documentation in a browser if you want the full experience. Another thing this is good for that I won't show you is for uh, company mode. I don't really like completion modes because they're always popping up and kind of distracting me. But if you do like them, uh, there's a keystroke in company mode to pop up a doc window, and it will pop up this, and another keystroke to pop up the, uh, the definition and show you that, and that's hooked up also. Okay, so I think that goes through all of my demo. Uh, I thought about preparing a bunch of slides discussing the implementation challenges and showing racket code, and then I realized I was the next to last talk uh, for, for the day and decided not to do that. Um, the only thing I will say is it's been interesting because part of the implementation, of course, is in eLisp, and part, actually quite a bit, is actually in racket. So, you know, this is running racket, uh, running a racket program to uh, provide the REPL. There's certain kind of hidden commands that are sent to that process and it sends text back. And so, you know, it's a little confusing sometimes, but you're kind of marshalling things back and forth between the, the eLisp and, and racket world. And rather than show you a bunch of slides, I thought I would try to give you a tangible uh, feeling of what that experience is like. So. Maybe some of you have seen this. I stole this from Leonard Green. But like if I was in Racket and say my palm was facing up and I wanted my palm to be facing down towards the floor, you know, I would just rotate my wrist. And done. But when you're trying to juggle things between ELISP and 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 Racket, it's not that not that simple. So all of you please please do this with me. Hold your hold your arm out straight in front, palm facing up. So without rotating our wrist, we're going to get the palm facing towards the floor. So step one, move your uh, arm up here. Don't rotate the wrist. Step two, down across your body. Don't, ro don't rotate your wrist. Now swing out in front. Don't rotate the wrist. Someone's not participating. Now up to their shoulder. Ro don't rotate your wrist. Down again. <laughs> and then out. And that's what the experience is like. <laughs> Thank you. So I have a question. Uh, you convinced me. How do I get this in my Emacs? Oh, yes, good point. Uh, <laughs> uh, one morning I woke up and someone said, oh, I put your racket mode package on Melpa, uh, which I wasn't expecting. So it's on Melpa and uh, uh, also it's on GitHub if you prefer to install it direct from source. So it's called racket mode. Can you e uh, rename all instances of an identifier in scope? Oh, uh, no, I tend to use the, uh, what is it, R rgrep command, I forget. I use some standard Emacs okay. stuff that is not scope aware. But that's a good feature idea. And I do accept pull requests. So. <laughs> Maybe in response to Jeff's thing, I, I feel like we could share the implementation of check syntax, that, or at least most of it. Um, to be able to do just that. It gives you just the list of things, the list of source locations to be able to rename. That would be great. I mean, there have been a few things that I've done where I thought, oh, if someone was doing a mode for a van or some other type of tool, it seems like there are little bits and pieces of racket code that, that you've done and I've done. 
and what you've done is probably better than what I've done, and um, or it would work better if it was part of the official uh, implementation and could change and other things change. So I'd love to talk about that. Okay, one more question. Can it uh, find usages, maybe, like with grab or so? What's that for finding uses? Finding usages, like the reverse of going to require. Oh, so. I see, right. Yeah, uh, like callers of the function, do you yeah. mean? Like the reverse of visit definition, visit callers. Yeah, um, Geyser mode has that feature, and that would be a good thing to add, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I currently use just grab for that in Emacs. Yep, yep. Something like that. Yeah, I find 90% of the time that works well, but sometimes it doesn't. Okay, thank All you. Right. Let's thank our speaker again. <laughs>